Hello and welcome back. So our next speaker is actually a writer. He has written a book and is an avid blogger. Welcome Martin Mitrevsky from Skopje in Macedonia. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you hear me well? Okay. Uh, so uh, my name is Martin and I uh, hope you are all well. Today I'm going to be talking about how you can build your own Google in Swift. So first, some short info about me. So yes, I'm coming from Macedonia, from Skopje. Um, it's a beautiful country in the uh, Southeast Europe. I'm working at uh, Etc. Um, for around eight years now. Uh, I'm blogging on martinmitrovsky.com, mostly about uh, iOS technologies lately with Swift UI, also machine learning, augmented reality, and uh, all other cool, new, interesting iOS technologies. I've published uh, the book uh, Developing Conversational Interfaces for iOS with Appress. And uh, I'm also publishing my own personal apps, such as Drawland um, and another football app that I'm currently working on. And uh, you can find uh, more about me on Twitter by this handle, Mitrevsky. Okay, so uh, let's see first what is Google doing. Uh, well, Google, its main goal is to basically answer our questions. So we have this uh, uh, text field where we enter information and then uh, Google queries the whole web and it tries to uh, find the uh, answers to our questions that are most likely what we were uh, looking for. It does this on a very large scale. So it crawls the whole web. It has very large data centers. It has very sophisticated algorithms that are continuously optimized by computer scientists, PhDs, and so on. And uh, this process is pretty impressive. We ask for something and then we get an answer in a very fast time. Uh, however, this is a mobile conference and uh, we are interested in a bit of a different Google with a different context. We don't want to crawl the whole web, uh, but we want to find answers in our own data. So uh, basically that's the user's data and uh, what the user enters and uh, how can we be able to answer questions uh, through this data. So, um, Let's see first a short demo. So uh, this is just to get an idea what the app might look like. And then we will also see it uh, like in real demo. So uh, first we have to collect the data. One uh, process of this is let's say document scanning. And then we have uh, text recognition. So you can see that all the data from the document is uh, recognized as a string. And then we ask questions to, to this uh, data uh, here in this uh, text field. And you can see that uh, the app returns with answers. So this can be quite useful if we have uh, large sets of documents and uh, we want to provide some better search, you know, like uh, where can I find this information in which document and, and stuff like this. So uh, it can be quite handy. Okay, so in the rest of this talk, we'll see how uh, this works and which technologies uh, we are going to use in order to have um, such an app. Uh, so uh, as you've seen here, we have several problems to tackle. Uh, the first one is uh, document scanning, uh, which was the detecting of the edges of, of a document. Then we have the text recognition, which is the process of extracting this data from the image and then converting it to a string, which uh, we can with manipulate with in the in our code and then of course the most interesting part which is uh, finding the answers in a document so let's get started first with the document scanning uh, we want some functionality that does edge detection and then uh, if we take the picture on an angle we want to have like um, uh, straightening uh, uh, up of the image so we can better see it uh, so uh, before iOS 13, uh, there were some uh, 
open source solutions like WeScan, but starting from iOS 13, we have this uh, great new API from Vision called uh, VN Document Camera View Controller which um, enables you to basically do just that so what we have seen in the video was uh, this uh, api in action it lets you scan as many documents as you like and then you get uh, images in return so uh, this example that i'm gonna showing to you is uh, written in swift ui uh, the whole source code is also on my github prep i will send you the the link uh, and uh, in order to use it since it's a UI view controller, we need to wrap it in a, a UI view controller representable in order to be able to use it in uh, Swift UI. So how we can do this? Uh, if you've used uh, Swift UI so far, probably this looks a bit familiar to you. We uh, implement this uh, protocol, UI view controller representable, and then we need to provide the type of the view controller in our case that's the vn document camera view controller and another uh, detail here is that we want to um, implement the delegate methods of uh, this view controller and in order to do this we need to uh, provide a coordinator which will implement this uh, delegate methods so basically here in this make UI view controller, uh, we set up the, the delegate to be the coordinator, which uh, is on this uh, next slide. So uh, this coordinator implements the view controller delegate from the document scanner. And the main part here is the delegate method, which uh, has uh, did finish scan with some uh, scan data with images. And we go through the, the scan and we put this in an array. So um, in this uh, step, we have all the data in images. So if you translate this uh, in Google's data, in, in Google's terms, we've collected the data from, from crawling the, the web. Okay, so now that we have the data as images, we need to somehow transform this data so it's uh, easily readable by our algorithms that will do the machine learning part of this and uh, extract the, the answers that we need. Uh, so text recognition, also very interesting problem. Uh, let's say that we have an image that has uh, this um, text, recognize me, and then we want to um, take this as a string. Uh, so the way to do this, uh, you can do this manually. It's quite an interesting exercise. I, I've tried it. Uh, so first you need to detect the uh, boxes. So this is one approach to detect uh, the boxes where each character is found. And um, you can do this with, uh, again, with Vision, this uh, Apple framework. Uh, you can do text detection, which will give you the uh, rectangles where every character is found. And then when you have each character, you can create your own machine learning uh, model that will um, uh, do analysis of each letter and find that this is the letter uh, Z, for example, or some other letter, and then you concatenate all the results. In the meantime, there is also some optimizations that you would need to do, filtering and stuff like this. Um, and um, then you need to take care of the spacing of the neurons, neurons the special characters and so on. And uh, at the end, you would need to find the, the meaningful words uh, because uh, some letters can easily be uh, replaced by some others if they are very similar. And uh, you would need to have some kind of a dictionary that will uh, keep track of the relevant words that, that you will need. So uh, this is very interesting. However, um, 
from iOS 13, we also have a great new API that handles this. So uh, it's called VN Recognize uh, Text Request. It's again from the Vision Framework and enables us to do all of these things that I've shown you, but uh, by just calling a request. So uh, starting from iOS 13, we don't need to take care of all these other things or even do uh, OCR as another alternative. Uh, so this request has a uh, fast and an accurate mode. So the fast one is usually used for augmented reality applications where you would need uh, like an instant input of uh, what was the detected uh, text. So this one works uh, faster, but it's a less accurate mode. And if you uh, need more accuracy, then uh, the other accurate mode is the better option, which uh, is a bit slower, but uh, since it uses a neural network, but the quality of uh, the recognized data is better. And another nice thing is that you can at your own words. So, for example, if you are developing an application that's specific so, uh, to some uh, business domain, then it will favor the words that you have provided uh, and then other words that uh, might be more easily recognized from, from the uh, text request. So, how this thing translates in code? Uh, if you've worked with uh, Vision so far, this might look familiar. So all of the Vision uh, requests are pretty similar. They're just from a different type. So here we are creating a VN recognized text request, and then we specify the, the handler. And then in the uh, handler of this request, we go through the results and uh, in our case here, we pick the, the first candidate that has uh, the biggest probability that's uh, the recognized word. But if you want to do something more sophisticated, you can just iterate through this uh, VN recognized text observations. And then you concatenate the uh, string, which would be the output of uh, this recognition. Uh, here, uh, then you set up the recognition level and then you go through all the images and execute the request. So now we are at the step where we uh, took those images from the scanning and we run a text recognizer. So we have uh, a string array that we want to uh, that we want to run this uh, machine learning algorithm that will provide us an answer to, to our question. So let's now go to, to this part, which is the most interesting part of um, this uh, challenge that we have. So finding answers, how we can find uh, answers in a document. So uh, if you've seen uh, WWDC last year, there was a glimpse of uh, how is this possible with uh, this BERT model. So the BERT model is, uh, was introduced by uh, researchers at the Google AI language. So it's a mach machine learning model. And um, this model uh, takes uh, text from a document, the whole document and a question. And then it gives you where in that document uh, most likely uh, an answer to the question that was asked uh, is going to be. So if it can return this uh, passage or if there is no answer to that question then it might return an empty one or uh, maybe it's a wrong answer so it depends and uh, this is basically uh, this BERT model is a neural network uh, which has many layers and this um, last layer can be fine-tuned to uh, perform several natural language uh, tasks like uh, questions and answers and uh, it can give pretty good answers. So uh, if you are interested in the paper that's uh, available online, you can read it out. There are some really interesting techniques. So in a nutshell, I will just uh, tell you uh, two of the techniques that uh, make this uh, a bit different than what was so far available in uh, the natural language processing world. So the two te techniques are uh, must language model, uh, which um, 
takes some um, tokens from, from the input and randomly uh, hides them, it masks them, and then it tries to predict what were those original uh, vocabulary IDs of the masked words based only on the context. So it works in two directions. It returns back to see uh, whether it correctly guessed the context, and that's why the B from the BERT model stands for bidirectional. And uh, also it does next sentence prediction. So uh, it tries to guess uh, what would be the next sentence from, from this document. So with these two techniques, uh, uh, it provides really great results. So we are uh, mobile developers, how we can use this in a mobile application. Well, uh, if you worked with CoreML so far, uh, we have this machine learning model, which was probably created by uh, some computer scientists, uh, data scientists, and so on. Uh, then we have some uh, transformers that uh, will convert this to our CoreML model. So, uh, for example, uh, we had at the beginning the Core ML tools, then uh, there were also many other options to create machine learning models like to recreate, create ML and so on. And then when we have uh, this ML model, we can just drag and drop it uh, in Xcode and then we can uh, do the predictions out of that. So uh, this was already done by the folks at Hugging Face. Uh, they created uh, some uh, CoreML uh, three implementations of BERT and also there is a distilled BERT uh, model for question answering. And this model can be downloaded from here or uh, from Apple's website. And you can do pretty cool things with, with it. Uh, so, how does it look, this uh, BERT CoreML model? So, um, here is uh, how we put it, uh, how we open it in Xcode. Uh, you can see the first thing that uh, comes to our eyes is the size. So, at the moment it's quite big, it's around 220 megabytes. And uh, this other distilled BERT is uh, around 170 megabytes, but it's still uh, a bigger one for uh, mobile app. Uh, however, you, you will not use any internet connection. Uh, then another interesting thing uh, is what are the inputs of this model and what are the outputs. So uh, the inputs are word IDs, which are multidimensional arrays, and word types, which is also a multidimensional array. So uh, basically multidimensional arrays are arrays which have multiple dimensions, uh, which have many dimensions. And the simplest one is uh, the matrix, which has uh, two dimensions. So we'll see how we go from uh, a string, which is the question, and the document, which is also a string, to uh, this data. And then at the end, when we get these outputs, how do we extract those so we can present them to the user? So uh, the process would be like this. We have a user input. Then we uh, create tokens out of the user's input. Then we have uh, some kind of mapping, some kind of a dictionary that provides uh, IDs to each of the inputs to the uh, uh, their corresponding IDs. Then we create this uh, input that the BERT model expects. Then we uh, run this through CoreML. We get a prediction. And out of this prediction, we need to find uh, what are the highest numbers of the most uh, likely answer. And then we take this range, we extract the string out of that, and we present this to the user. So that's the, the process. Uh, let's see it in more detail uh, with an example from some uh, several sentences from the MDEF camp, camp website. 
So um, here we have uh, several sentences that say that uh, MDevCamp is the largest uh, conference for mobile developers. It will feature some great speakers, talks and networking opportunities. And then uh, you should come to meet hundreds of developers from all around the world. So uh, let's see what happens if we want to uh, ask our model, who will you meet? uh what transformations happen along the way and then we will need to expect some kind of an answer which uh, would be around uh, this uh, come to meet hundreds of developers from all around the world so the first step we have uh, the sentence so i removed the middle sentence uh, so we can better have a look at the visualizations and what happens along the way while we transform this data. So um, first we do a tokenization of the word, of the document. And to do this, we are using the NL tagger from natural language framework. It's a great framework for, from Apple about uh, natural language tasks. So it creates uh, tokens, word tokens from this sentence. And if it doesn't find one, for example, MDEV camp is not something that uh, the natural language framework can detect as its own token. In those cases, it splits it up in uh, several sub tokens and those will have their own uh, separate IDs. So for example, here, MD, EIF and CAMP are all separate tokens and they will uh, have their own numbers like this. So these are the numbers uh, based on the mapping that's uh, defined in, in a vocabulary. So why do we need to do this? Um, it's because uh, the BERT model works a lot faster uh, with numbers than uh, analyzing all these strings. So we need to do this mapping basically for, for performance reasons. And then we do uh, the same thing for our question, who will you meet? And then it also gives us some numbers. So now we have the uh, token IDs out of the word tokens. And the next step is to create uh, this multidimensional arrays. So uh, uh, the BERT model has some specific uh, uh, input that it expects. So uh, the first uh, entry in the class, the input has to be a uh, word with ID uh, 101, which is the start of the classification. Then comes the question, then a separator, then goes the document. And then at the bottom, if there is uh, some space left, uh, additional padding. So the, third, the second and the third column are what the, we will put to the model as an input. Uh, so we've talked about the word IDs, how they are generated. And uh, then the word types are uh, just to distinguish the question from a document. So it's a one for the document and zero for the question. So we have that uh, model uh, input. Then we put it uh, in a prediction. So we just run through the model uh, a prediction and then uh, we get this prediction and now we need to uh, extract where are the uh, answers. So basically uh, the model returns us uh, a start index values and end index values. And we need to find the range which has the highest start index and the highest end index. And basically, when we do this, we get the, the string. So let's see this now in action with the app. So I, I skipped the part for the document scanning and the uh, text recognition. So I've directly, directly added a mock uh, document here uh, that has uh, the text that we were talking about in this presentation. So let's ask some questions. So the first one, who will you meet? Let's see what it answers. 
hundreds of developers from all around the world. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's see something else. What is MDEF camp? Okay, the largest conference for mobile developers in Central Europe. Uh, let's see which edition is this. It's the ninth edition, great. Let's see uh, what will it feature. Okay, that's the answer. Speakers, in-depth talks, networking opportunities. Uh, what else? Uh, what kind of world does it have? Maybe let's see how this one. Virtual 3D world. So, okay, so uh, it also detected uh, this one. Uh, and uh, how this thing looks in code. Um, first here we create, uh, let's see if I can. So first we create the tokenized string. Uh, we do this with this NL tagger that I've mentioned from uh, the natural language framework. And uh, once we have uh, those tags and their numbers, so the numbers uh, correspond to the indexes in a vocabulary that we have defined. So uh, if there was visibly in the question, then it would be mapped to this number here. Uh, here you can use also JSON or anything else. And then uh, here we have the uh, input. Uh, you can see here we had all the tokens for start, for separation, for the question token IDs, for the document token IDs. Then we convert them here to a multidimensional array. And then we create this model input. Then if we go uh, to our app that's using this, so the document detail uh, screen. This is the one that uh, that's presented here. Uh, so it has uh, a text field which uh, is uh, uh, bound to this variable question and whenever we press this answer button we are calling uh, a find answer button uh, method which uh, runs this uh, bird find answer uh, for the question and for the document. And whenever the answer changes, the view is withdrawn with, um, with the answer that the BERT model detected. Uh, then uh, for the output, just a few words. Uh, here uh, we have this method to find the best pair uh, that uh, has the highest start index and the highest end index. Uh, and then if you want to uh, see how the data moves here. What are the transformations? I've developed some simple uh, Swift UI views. Uh, so you can type here uh, your text and you will see uh, how it is converted to which uh, values so you can better understand what, what happens uh, under the hood uh, with this uh, process. So uh, then we've seen the, the slides for the, in the slides, the uh, text recognizer. So nothing special here, just as uh, we've discussed recognized text request. And uh, also the scanning view, this wrapper around the UI view controller representable. So that's uh, the whole project, basically. You can have a look at it in more details on my GitHub repo. So, now let's go back to the presentation. Uh, what are the challenges of uh, these kinds of applications? So uh, the first one, probably the elephant in the room is uh, the model size is quite big at the moment. So uh, because all this data is uh, uh, bundled locally and uh, there is no internet connection and uh, it's uh, around uh, over actually 200 megabytes. 
Uh, another challenge that I haven't mentioned before is that um, it can process up to 384 tokens. So if your input is larger than that, uh, you have several options. So let's discuss uh, those next. So um, if you have a big document, then what you could do is while you enter it, you can split it up in tokens, which have uh, at most 384 tokens. And then uh, you can uh, have a search mechanism to uh, find where you should look for, for that answer. So one approach to do this is uh, with a keyword search. So uh, whenever you enter a document, you can generate keywords from uh, that document. Uh, it's also an interesting uh, topic, but uh, we will not have time to discuss this in uh, bigger details, but I will tell you uh, how to uh, do this. I've tried this uh, by generating uh, keywords for my blog posts by using uh, TF-IDF uh, algorithm. So this stands for uh, term frequency, inverse document frequency. Uh, and then if this doesn't work, then you can fall back to brute force search and uh, that might be a lot slower. So how this um, TF-IDF algorithm work? Uh, basically, uh, for each document, for each term in the document, we count how many times this term appears in the document and then we um, uh, count how many times it appears in other documents. So uh, the more it appears in other documents as well, the less important it is to this document. And when we multiply these two values, we can see how important is a word uh, to a document. So for example, words like uh, D or A or uh, what or something that's very frequently used, that will appear also in other documents and that's not really important for the meaning of this document but if we have something very specific for uh, as a term it will most likely not appear in other documents as well and when you sort the most important ones you get the keywords and then when you uh, search to find the paragraph that has the uh, tokens that uh, uh, most likely will answer your question, then you can just try to find uh, synonyms or maybe the same words and then you will have a place where to look for. Uh, okay, so uh, how this uh, works for other languages. Uh, so for example, the, the text recognition uh, doesn't uh, work very good for all the languages. So for example, for my native Macedonian language um, is uh, not showing very nice uh, data. Uh, it can have some strange appear, uh, characters and so on. But about the Q&A uh, model, actually sometimes it returns pretty correct results. At least it gives you the sentence where uh, uh, the answer might be. Uh, however, sometimes it lacks context, uh, it's not smart enough and uh, so on. So, uh, however, it's uh, surprisingly uh, okay. So, uh, next let's discuss about the pros and cons of this uh, approach. So, maybe this uh, applies in general about on-device machine learning versus uh, machine learning uh, by calling a server and getting results out of that. So first, uh, the benefits. Uh, one benefit is that uh, everything is happening locally. So you don't need any internet connection, uh, which also means that um, if you have a lot of users, uh, your costs uh, for server would be very low uh, if you don't serve this uh, via a web service or something like that. Uh, basically, you are using the, the power of the device. Uh, then another very important aspect is the user privacy. So uh, their data never leaves the device. Uh, 
users can completely use your app offline and uh, in uh, these times this is very important to the users because their data might be used for for some wrong reasons and uh, might be also a plus in gaining the users trust for for this and of course with this uh, you uh, uh, have this uh, GDPR, the data protection stuff, so you are compliant with this because you are not uh, storing any user's data. And uh, this might be quite handy because uh, we are talking here about uh, personal data and finding answers in your own data, not crawling the web and uh, getting an information that's publicly available, but your own personal data. So for example, uh, you can ask, find me the uh, blood report from, I don't know, from this day or something like this. And uh, that's a sensitive data that's uh, only, that should be only available to the user. Uh, what are the, the cons? Well, uh, one thing is uh, updating the model is a bit more difficult. Um, now CoreML has some uh, ways to personalize and update the model. However, uh, that's also a challenge because uh, you don't have access to the user's data to improve the model if you want to do this uh, uh, online with internet connection. Uh, then another challenge is, as we have seen, the, the size of the model. It's quite big. However, I'm pretty sure that over time uh, this would be reduced. And uh, then another thing is the performance. You've seen, maybe you've noticed that it's around two or three seconds uh, response time. And uh, if we have uh, bigger documents, that might be a bit more. So. Uh, of course, you can optimize this with uh, some other search techniques, but it's still it would be uh, probably slower than uh, having this with um, uh, web server. Okay, so uh, thanks a lot for your attention. And the, the nice thing about uh, hearing a talk about q and is that you can uh, put your uh, first image also as a last image and uh, if you have uh, any questions uh, let's see if uh, there is something uh, here or uh... yes we do have questions actually so uh, oh, the first cool, one yeah. is about a community in Macedonia is there a strong iOS development community uh, well, actually, not that much at the moment, I would say. So uh, I know that uh, there were some initiatives a few years ago. Uh, there was this Coco Heads Macedonia uh, group, but uh, I think it never really uh, hit off, which is uh, probably a bit of a pity. Uh, and I think at the moment uh, nothing is uh, happening in, in that area. So usually it's a bit localized. So for example, uh, the our iOS developers in our company have some meetups like once a month to discuss uh, what we've learned between our projects but that's only like close to the company and that's it uh, however it's a great idea that uh, someone can initiate this and we have like regular meetups for having a, a community okay i uh, hope that answers the the first question well maybe uh, there are then in Macedonia who would now join you and help you create a stronger community. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, okay. Uh, there is another question. Um, have you used this approach in some production app? Uh, yes, so uh, the answer is no. So I haven't used it. Uh, and I think the biggest reason is uh, finding really a uh, use case that will solve your uh, business problem. So uh, usually this has to be, I think, very niche. So uh, maybe an app for lawyers, maybe an app for uh, doctors and something like that. That's uh, one challenge that I still haven't found how I can use this in a best way by providing uh, value to the users. Um, and then 
Uh, the other, of course, uh, thing is the um, size of the model. So it's uh, quite big and uh, it's uh, if you're okay with having your users install uh, an app with 200 megabytes, that this might be an option. Uh, for iPad apps, for example, it's uh, quite uh, handy. I mean, it's quite common to have big apps. So why not? So if anyone finds really good use case, uh, feel free to uh, use this uh, initial uh, development to, to build your own application. Uh, okay, I uh, hope that solves the, the question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, another okay, question is, is, is an app uh, localization support something solvable or are there only limited languages supported? Uh, well, uh, yes and no. So if we open uh, the vocabulary, uh, you will see here uh, that uh, there are, I think they were somewhere at the bottom, there are also here Chinese characters, Macedonian characters, and so on. And this is, uh, yeah, so here are the, the characters. And uh, those are very granular, up to a letter. So uh, this model, this vocabulary was used for training the, the BERT model. So if you retrain it with bigger data by providing uh, more specific uh, characters uh, and words for your language, then you can also update this document, this uh, vocabulary, and potentially have uh, better results. Uh, but you will need to do also the retraining of the machine learning model, not only the, the iOS model. So, uh, however, it's, it's doable. It should be, uh, so the, in the paper, it says that it's not really language dependent. So uh, that should be fine. However, it will just uh, give you the, even if you use it like this, if you try it out, for example, uh, in Czech language, then you will get something it, uh, like a sentence that answers your question. Okay, I uh, hope that uh, solves uh, this question. Thank, thank you. you about we this. Have a couple more. Uh, yeah, thank you again. <laughs> Hope you like. Actually, really interesting. So we have many questions. That's great. Uh, another question yeah. is: Will the whole model be sent with the app? Uh, so uh, it's uh, it can be downloaded from Apple's website. So um, it's not on the Git repo because there is a limitation of hundred megabytes. However, uh, if you just type "bird model." Apple, I think, yeah. So, uh, if you open the core ML models section and just select this text area, you can find the BERT model here, the core ML model. So, uh, it's not shipped with the app, but you, uh, you can just uh, grab it from here and uh, include it in the uh, project and then you will you will have it there. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Uh, is, thank you there again. Are yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Do you have any idea how much it impacts battery life in the user's devices? Um, uh, well, uh, that's a good uh, question. It's uh, actually not that bad because uh, you are running this every uh, on every question and. Uh, only in that uh, part you uh, have a battery impact. So that's just one or two seconds until the, the answer is generated. So uh, I haven't noticed any uh, battery life impact on this. So uh, you can also connect this to voice. I forgot to mention this. Uh, and this process is just two or three seconds. It's not something that uh, happens in the background, so a lot. You just have a model and then you have fire and forget methods. So if you ask thousands of questions uh, like uh, sequentially, of course it will have impact, but for a regular user of the app, it's not noticeable. So uh, this is the first part of the question. And then uh, how many times you would say sprint run? Okay, so uh, yeah, if you, uh, run a lot of questions, then you will see some difference. Otherwise, it's uh, 
pretty okay. Okay, so okay. and the last one. Um, the question is: so the localization is uh, number of languages multiplied by two hundred megabytes. Uh, well, not necessarily, because um, of if you hmm, uh, so if you if you look at this uh, here, it's uh, the vocabulary itself is not very big. So uh, I will just open it uh, in Finder. I think is uh, around yeah, it's uh, 232 kilobytes. So if you extend this, uh, probably it would not have that big of an impact. However, what happens before that in the training area, I would say it's uh, still in that region. So I wouldn't say that it will uh, increase like dramatically if you uh, increase the, the languages. So it should be fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And the last two are not questions, but they are appraisal. Uh, thank you thank very you. much for your topic. Obviously, it made an impact. People were really interested. Our audience, if you have any more questions, Martin now will be available in the 3D world in the speaker's corner for the next 15 minutes. Uh, the speaker's yep. corner is very near the place where you will be spawned in the 3D world app, so you don't have to walk any far. Uh, so please go there and talk to Martin and ask a lot of questions. This was a really interesting topic and a live demo. That's always great. So thanks again, Martin. Um, Thank you. We will be back at uh, 16.05 uh, with another talk. I would just like to uh, ask uh, our audience to rate this talk. I will just start the poll right now in Slido. So uh, please go there and uh, rate this talk. Also, if you would like to tweet about MDEFCAM, please use the hashtag MDEFCAM. Apart from that, I hope that you are having no technical issues with the streams or with the 3D world. If you do, we have uh, technical support. Uh, you will find out everything on our webpage mdefcamp.eu. So far, thank you from me and I will see you all in 19 minutes from now. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.